This is Algebra 2, Chapter 8, Section 1, in which we will be studying multiplying and dividing rational expressions. Now, before we can do anything with rational expressions, we need to know what one is. When we talk about a rational expression, we're just talking about a ratio of polynomials. That is to say, we have something that looks like what I call an algebra fraction. It's got variables in the numerator, variables in the denominator. You know, it, so it's letters everywhere. Now the good news is you already know basically what to do with these things. Because you learned in elementary school the rules for how to work with fractions. And these are the same rules. The only difference is they have variables involved, so you can't just reach for your calculator. You have to actually do the math correctly. The first rule involved in simplifying is you have to factor before you can cancel. If you try to cancel before you factored, stop, you're about to mess up. This is so important that it's in all caps, red, and blinking. So make sure you take care of that. Factor, then cancel. Now they're also going to ask us to identify where our function, our uh, expression is undefined. Something is undefined when the denominator is equal to zero. You can't divide by zero, so anything that would cause you to do that would be a place where you're undefined. So let's do a little simplifying. We've got a rational expression here that we want to try to clean up. Now a lot of people will try to cancel this y squared with this y squared. You can't do that. It's illegal math. What you have to do is like we said on the first page. We have to factor and then we can try to cancel. Well, we learned back in earlier this year, I believe it was chapter 5, about factoring. So you, if you don't remember how to factor, go back and refresh yourself on that topic. The videos are on the website. But we're going to factor these things. So we're going to factor our trinomials. And we've got them broken down. Now we can go in and cancel things that match. Y cancels Y. Y minus 3 cancels Y minus 3. Nothing else cancels because nothing else matches, so we're left with 4 times Y plus 4 all over Y plus 2. I'm going to clear out my canceling so that I can answer the next question. When is it undefined? We need to know when the denominator would equal zero. Well, when does the denominator equal zero? It will equal zero if y is zero for this factor, or if y is three for this factor, or if y is negative two for the last factor. Let's try another one out. It's got a little bit of a twist to it. We're going to factor these things again. So we're going to use our factoring rules that we've already learned. We're going to look for common factors. We're going to play difference of squares. We're going to do all those kinds of things. So I'm factoring out the common AB on that one. And I'm doing difference of squares factoring. Now these two things look a lot alike, but they're backward. Okay. Think about if I told you b is 2. Okay. If I told you b is 2, you would have 2 minus 5 is a negative 3. Here you would have 5 minus 2 is 3. You have the same value, just opposite signs, so if you can't, if you reduce those, it would cancel out and leave a negative 1. So I'm going to do that. 
I'm going to cancel them out and leave a negative 1. Now, I learned to always put the negative 1 on top. You can put it on bottom. It's just as good. I do it on top just because that's what I was taught. So if I finish cleaning up now, AB times negative 1 is negative AB over 5 plus B. Okay. Next up, we're going to multiply some of these things. And the rule is simple. You multiply straight across, and then you simplify. Now, you may remember learning in elementary that you could cancel like 8 with 12. You could cancel out the 4 from each of them. 14 for 21, you can cancel out a 7 from each of them. If you remember those tricks and you can use them correctly, please feel free. Me, for showing you how to do this, I'm going to put it all together as one fraction. So 12 times all this times 14 times all this, everything is represented the same thing on the denominator. Okay. Now, you'll also notice I put the variables in alphabetical order. That's just, I was taught to do it that way. So I do. If you don't put them in order, that's fine. But now we're ready to do some canceling. 4 goes into both of these. Leaves a 3 there and a 2 there. 7 goes into both of these. 3 cancels 3, 2 cancels 2, so all the numbers are gone. They cleaned up perfectly this time. Won't always happen. If I take one of the A's out of those two A's, that leaves me 1A. 1B comes out of those three B's and leaves two B's. Two of the C's comes out of three of the C's and leaves one C. 2D's out of the 4 leaves 2D's. Sorry, a D's not very neat, but it's kind of hard to write with a touchpad. So when we get right down to the bottom line and clean everything out, we're left with AC on top and B squared, D squared on bottom. Okay. Let's do one that's a little more involved. We're going to have to do some factoring on this one. So we're going to use all the factoring rules that we already know. The factors of 8x minus 20 are these first two. x squared minus 7x plus 10 is these two. x squared plus 2x minus 35 is these two. And then 4x squared minus 25 is these two. Now we're ready to do some canceling. Everything's factored. I have a 2x minus 5 that matches this one. I have an x minus 5 that matches this one. Nothing else matches, so I can't cancel anything else. So I'm left with 4 times x minus 2 over x plus 7 times 2x plus 5. If you want to, you can distribute those things. You can clean that up if you wish. But for my money, I'm happy if you leave it there. It's perfectly fine with me. Um, my thinking is if you clean it up from here, it's just one more place to make a mistake. You've done it right to here. I would hate to see you get it wrong after this point, just from carelessness. So I would leave it there. Dividing is the next topic. Dividing with these things involves one more step on the front end. You have to first flip over whatever's after the division sign. Then it turns into a multiply problem. Okay, we're going to do a couple of these. We have two rational expressions being divided. Now the rule is we turn the divide into a multiply 
and we do the reciprocal of the fraction afterward. Now it's a multiply problem, so we're going to put it all together. Then we're going to do some reducing. 6 goes into 12 twice. 8 goes into 16 twice, and it goes into 40 five times. Two A's take out of their leaves. Two A's. No other B's. Two X's out of there. And two Y's out of there. Okay. Now it's time to just pull together what we have. We have 4X cubed over 5a squared b fourth y squared. Okay. Let's do one more of this nature where we have a little bit more involved going on. We're going to have to factor all these things. So I'm going to factor them right next to where they are, just in the interest of saving space. Okay, They're all factored. Now we're going to do the next two steps together. We're going to flip this over into a multiply and flip this fraction. So you notice the stuff on the bottom here came to the numerator. Stuff up here on top went to the denominator. And now we're ready to cancel things that match. x minus 4, x plus 7. Now a lot of people will try to cancel the 2x plus 3's because they match. But they're both in the denominator so they can't cancel. So we're left with 6 times x minus 5 over x plus 3 quantity squared. If you wanted to write it as x plus 3 times x plus 3 that would be okay as well. It would be the same thing. Our last topic that we have to cover today is the idea of a complex fraction. What you're looking at is a fraction over another fraction. When you have a fraction over a fraction, what you're really looking at is a division problem. The top fraction divided by the bottom one. Okay. Now we know how to deal with this. It's a division, so we're going to turn it into a multiply. And we're going to flip the second fraction. And I'm going to go ahead and factor as I go. So the 2x minus 10 became 2 times x minus 5. The x squared minus 4 became x plus 2x minus 2. Notice I flipped them as I factored them, mostly in the interest of space. Now it's canceling time. X minus 2 can cancel this one. 2 cancels 2. Nothing else matches. So you're left with just the pieces that are left. Now I could just as easily have canceled this X minus 2. It wouldn't matter which one of the two I cancel, as long as I canceled one of them. So that's what we've got today, folks. You're going to be doing a lot of factoring and a lot of simplifying. If you had questions along the way, hope you wrote those down, bring them in, and we will see you in class.